Good morning. This is Dr. Bill White again, and uh, I'm with the American Orthodontic Society, and I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the many factors that are involved uh, when you're leveling a deep bite case. You have to level from some point. You have to use the teeth themselves to help you level, and this is cause, causes problems because you, you get exactly the same pressure uh, when you're picking up the anterior teeth as you, uh, you know, the pressure to pick them up, it pushes the molar teeth down. It's just the tooth balance exactly the same uh, in there, and people have to think about that and I'll show you what happens on the six-year molars, that actually, that are uh, the teeth that provide the force to raise the anterior teeth, either raise the upper or lower the uh, lower anterior teeth. Uh, so uh, we'll get uh, involved here, and uh, let me start to uh, show you the picture of this case. Now, this was a, an odd case. Uh, we put this stuff on this young man, uh, and I may have seen him one time, but then he uh, vanished, and he didn't come back for six months. And we had two little wires in there lifting the upper anteriors and depressing the lower anterior, and... He came back in about six months, and he couldn't bite his front teeth together. I mean, that's the reason he, he came came in. Uh, and so uh, I learned so much from this case. And if you uh, watch cases that uh, do odd things, uh, something that you couldn't uh, actually set up to do yourself, <laughs> Uh, they just do them, but keep a record of it and see what it is. So uh, let me show you this fellow. Uh, this is not a good picture right here, but uh, he his bite is open. He can't actually bite his front teeth together out here. And when we lived six months before that, his lower teeth you could you couldn't already see them where his upper teeth came down over them. And uh, we had a, we had a uh, intruding arch wire on the lower and on the upper, uh, separating the teeth. He has a beautiful class one relationship, uh, but with the deep bite, these lower anterior teeth will be uh, crowded, which I'll show you on the models uh, later on. And we, didn't have very many uh, pictures on him to start with. Uh, so this is after uh, he came back to do this. And then I went back and took a bunch of pictures of his models. Uh, now, here are the two little wires that we had in. And uh, this is where we have the birth of the uh, Bill White's intruding arch wire. Uh, these two little wires right in here opened this guy's bite. I mean, went from the molar, the six-year molar, to the six anterior teeth up here, and it lowered the lowers and raised the upper teeth from the force from these two little wires here. So they were and, uh, uh, famous to me. <laughs> Uh, and so I started using this intruding wire, and we used a much better uh, spring loop down here than we had on these two uh, small wires. The thing we use on them now, we drop the uh, circle down like this and make a complete deal, and then we come off of that, maybe a little less angle, and come back around like that and make the intruding wire uh, this way. 
Now, when you activate this and pull it up, like you level it out and hook it up here, and this is on the lower arch, of course, and it'll push those lower teeth down. Now, the force that pushes these lower teeth down or intrudes them, whatever it is, and as we raise that up, that tightens this spring, and that's the, where you have it. I'm going to draw one that's kind of open, and you can see what I'm talking about in here. As you pull this up, you pull this wire up, this tightens this up. And so it works for you wanting to loosen this. So it's wanting to go down real bad, see. And so you put it in the mouth, and it does go down, and it takes the teeth down. We can open anybody's bite, uh, I think. I never run into anybody we couldn't open their bite. And you put this deal on, and we put it into the molar. We put this into the molar tube, of course. Uh, well, the molar would be up higher, and the tube back in here. And this is a rectangular wire, so if you activate it, a whole lot, it'll tend to roll if it's a round wire. Uh, so we use a, I use that one, eight, one, 18, two, five arch wire. So we use a, an 18, two, five, or actually, actually, I just use a 17, two, five. It's a little smaller wire. But let's uh, go on here and get back on the uh, thing I wanted to talk. Yeah. Uh, right here is the uh, models of the guys when we started now and this is their lower I mean you can see the lower anterior teeth underneath here just a little so this is opening and I'm going to show you from the other side later on here and you can see the lower anterior teeth go up right up almost the gum line up above on those uh, teeth. Uh, I've got my nose is itching this morning. So <laughs> anyway, uh, let's, let's show you how this does. And so we hooked up these, these two little wires, and of course they were in the six-year molars, and they went up like this, and we brought them down and hooked them to these teeth, and... I brought them up from the back, and we had to put something in there to kind of open it up so I could get uh, the first uh, wires on the lower anterior teeth to bring them down because they were really close up there. Uh, so I may have seen him one time, and then he just disappeared, and when he came back in six months, he came back because he couldn't bite through with the teeth. I'll show you that on a little closer uh, picture here later. All right. Well, there it is. <laughs> uh, now, we had bands on his teeth. And this was, by the way, this was in 1971 when we did this. 1971. Uh, so... That's about 40 uh, some uh, years ago when we uh, started this intruding wire. And I've lectured on it and everything on the sun, showing people how you can open anything. It doesn't make any difference. They can be, uh, I've done it on people in their late 80s, but not anybody, I've never started anybody in the 90s. But uh, I think you could do it. Uh, and uh, I know if I put it on my own mouth, it would open my teeth, and I'm 90 years old. So uh, uh, I know it would. And I always start all this stuff that, you know, they used to think, well, you couldn't do any uh, uh, orthodontics on a person over a certain age, maybe 20 or something like that. Yeah, well, that's that's just that's wrong. You can straighten anybody's teeth if they're 
got any bone structure down there to help you get along with it. So this is why he came back. He could not bite his teeth together out here in front. So he came back. Now these teeth here were down on this part of the uh, tissue. You couldn't see anything down there. And so that's opened up with the force of these wires. And the force that pushes this up is just as much as the force that's pushing the molar teeth down. And what pushes these down right here is pushing this tooth up. In other words, these two molar teeth were being pushed together, but I want to show them to you later. I have a picture here, a real close-up of these molars. They were very, moved very little, and that's why they can stick a deal on the six-share molar and run up here and run a class two elastic off of it, just lay it over the cusp it, it might pull down a little bit, but you can do all kind of class two corrections with this uh, uh, little bar they stick on the, uh, or put on the six-year molar, and that's all you need a lot of times to collect a kid in uh, class two. Now, you can make your own deal if you wanted to. You could put a big daddy arch wire in here and come around on the other side over here and put a hook on it and then it'll do the same doggone thing. It's, it's just these teeth are not going to move much if you've got somebody that chews properly and chews, and this guy does. He chews properly. And let me go on now to this next one. And now this is from the side, and you can see these teeth moved very little. They're cocked up a little bit. The roots moved forward just slightly. And then these down here, if you raise this up, these roots would move, have a tendency to move forward because your, your bar is out here and you're raising it up. And the bar is over here and you're, it's up here and you're raised, bringing it down and it's picking the teeth up and it's picking them down here. I just wanted to go through this and explain it a little clearer. And this was in 1971. And so we've been doing this. You put 71 uh, from there to 2000 is about 29. And you come in on the other side of it and add another 19 to it. And it's 25, be 30, I mean 29. It'd be 39 plus 9, which would be about... 47 years ago, we did this. And this case is that old right here. And what I learned here changed my orthodontics all those years. We opened anybody's bite, and you can too. You know, just, just a matter of sticking it on there. But when you open somebody, you have this to contend with. If you wanted to increase the vertical height of the lower third of the face, you would put a block over here and you would bite together and these teeth wouldn't, wouldn't allow your molars to touch. And if your molars don't hit each other and you're putting this force on them to go down to raise these up, then the force that's raising these up is going to push your molars down. Now, here the guy is chewing on this all the time, and it doesn't go down. And if you want somebody with a deep bite and has a high lower third of the face, it's too high, and he's looked at, and you don't want to make the high angle any worse, put some blocks on this, and they'll chew on this and it will not move 
while you lower this. I actually lowered the geogen angle in here while opening the dental bite. Uh, it's because of the blocks here. So in high angle cases, you put the block here. Low angle cases that you want to increase it, put the bite block out in the, in the front. And it will work. So I wanted to stress that this morning. Uh, now, that's just showing that a little bit uh, more magnification. These molars moved very little. And that's why these Carrier or whatever these appliances have been smart enough. <laughs> we knew why this worked. Tweed knew how he had a little deal went out like that on the on the molar and used for class two elastic so it's not a new idea at all and you could make one yourself as i showed you in there now wait just a minute i better race that or it'll stay on the thing uh, now this is the upper and this is a picture that's not all that good but we had this is back in 1971 we didn't have any idea about brackets then in fact we didn't get into full brackets and everything for about uh, up in the later 70s uh, we went to them gradually and we had the six-year molars banded and all of the force that raised these teeth out here came from these six-year molars right here. And they moved very doggone little, simply because the guy chewed like mad and had a good class one relationship. So the two little wires that were pushing up out here intruded this whole front part of his mouth and that's uh, that's what you want to get done and you want to, the price not to cost you too much. Now if you want to increase the vertical part of the face in here, this part right in here, the lower third, if you want to increase this part of your face then put something that they bite right up here in the front part of the mouth. Then these molars don't contact anything and they've got the force going down on them that's pushing this up. It's going to be exactly the same. Then these molars are going to erupt toward one another. They won't, uh, the bone structure thing will go with them and whatever they the uppers go down and the lowers go up. Whatever they come together in here, that little bit is actually greater out here in front because you've got it's kind of like a, a gate or something. It, it, you open it a little bit here and it's swinging down and it's greater out in the front than it is uh, in the back, I uh, uh, hope you can see what I'm, what I'm driving at here. Uh, but when you pull back here and you've got somebody that really chews, you can just leave these uh, molds alone and it will not open the back very much. But if you want to close it some, put you some blocks over the lower, just bond some acrylic up on top of the lower molars and bicuspids in here and you can raise the anterior teeth or do whatever you want to and it won't increase this vertical height of the face. This messes up the uh, facial structure if you, if you increase this about uh, three quarters of an inch or something you can make somebody that looks real nice look kind of like that. I mean, pulled down on their eyes and, and uh, you can screw up the face. And so if you've got a high angle to start with and you have never messed with this stuff, 
uh, send it on to somebody that's had a little experience in it rather than jump it in there because you stir up the high angle case and the thing will get higher and it uh, will just stay there. Now, low angles, you increase them a little bit and they tend to come back better. So that's something to watch out for uh, if you're just getting into this uh, pass your high angle cases on to somebody else. Let them worry with it. If the guy knows how to do it, you can do whatever you want to and you will not uh, make the face uh, any, uh, the lower third of the face any greater. All right, here is the lower arch and we had the bands, of course, on the six year molders. And, uh, and these are banded here. And we didn't know what a bracket was then, see. Uh, and I used to teach with Dr. Dave Mitchell, who was head of the department at Emory. And uh, he and I got to be real good friends. And he came and, and we talked together. And he told me he did the first case with brackets. He bonded them on with red copper cement and he had to etch the teeth to put them on. And back then etching was a, a no, no, you didn't do it. Now we etch everything under the sun. Uh, and so he didn't publish it. And he was kicking himself for not <laughs> doing it uh, after a little later, but he did uh, he he said it's the first case that was treated with brackets. They made their own homemade brackets there, and he did this. And I uh, named the, the appliance that I came up with here, the Mitchell Appliance. It's for class two cases. Okay, well, back to finishing up here this morning. I don't want to take too much time. We've already got about 22 minutes here. Uh, all right, here's the upper, looking at it again. Now, and uh, we're going backwards, I'm sorry. All right, there we are, deep by it. This is the models, and he, this young man had a nice class one bite back here. This couldn't be much better, and, but the had the deep bite, and it crowds up the lower anterior teeth when you uh, have a class one as a deep bite. They have to have lower crowding. You can't already get them in there without the crowding like that. Uh, okay, there's the, let's see, you see how crowded they are. And I'm going to get to this picture that I want to in a minute. Uh, this is showing you just the deep bite, but a, a nice class one relation here. And this guy chews. And so when we pick this up, this bit together is hard, even though this one tooth, well, there's one on the other side too, picks these six teeth up. And it was kind of like this. He, he got to where he couldn't bite his front teeth together. The cuspids never did get out of occlusion, I don't think, in the lower interior right there. And all the force came from these two molars, but they didn't hardly move at all simply because he chews on these teeth right here. Uh, so you learn things when somebody <clears throat> does some ridiculous thing and you've got some records on them you learn some things that you can't uh, create a situ situation like this on some adult, and we can't do it on animals. So you've got to learn from things that people just happen to do. And so he came in and he couldn't bite his teeth together. And he, <laughs> I guess he would have stayed longer if he could have bitten his teeth together. See, the cuspids didn't come on, but the laterals, of course, here, this wire went up something like this, brought it down, and the cuspids 
didn't raise much. They just kind of changed the angle on them. But these teeth went down. I mean, these went up and these went down. And we opened the whole blooming bite with two little flimsy wires. I mean, they were just round wires, too. But you you can do this. You can open somebody's bite with a rectangular intruding wire with that good uh, that loop we showed you how. And like that, that will open them in a matter of uh, two or three months. You'll have them, and you'll take your deep bite cases. You can have them leveled out while somebody with one arch wire that he's bent up like this is trying to do this. You'll have it finished before he even gets it going good, before you put a big enough wire in there. You put that on there the first day when you get out there. So anyway, that's the two little wires that we used. And uh, now here, I want to show you this. This is the only place in here that I've got the date that we did this. But it's on the models. We took in 1971. In 71, right there. I covered up his name. Uh, this guy now is 46 or 7 years older than he was when we we're back here, and I don't even know, have any earthly idea where he is. Now, his lower teeth came right up here, close to the roof of the mouth. He wasn't chewing into the gum uh, I could, that I could tell much when we started, but he wanted to get this open, and we have pushed this down and the upper teeth up, with those two little wires and they were working off of these two teeth right in here. Now this is the way that these teeth should come together. The lingual cusp of the upper bias and molars fall in the groove of the lower teeth in here. Now, if you have somebody who is a mouth breather. Whoops. If they were a mouth breather, then their tongue would be back in this part of the mouth, right in here. And if their tongue's in there, and they have to breathe over the top of it, this widens this out to where they're hit on the cusp. And then they'll shift their jaw frequently and change like that. So anyway, this is, this is correct here. And it opened the bite, it stayed in that correct uh, manner. So we'll go from here. Now I think this is about the last of it. And you can see symptomatically, this guy was a chewer. He had a good airway, everything's good in here and he kept this um, mouth it, it worked out great and opened this up and I learned a lot and there's a lot to know about opening deep bites on anybody you have a opportunity to increase the height of the lower third of the face if you want to I had a lady that was chewing so much, I mean, her chin was too close to her nose, and we opened it, we put bites blocks out here, and it increased the height of the face when we straightened it out. So I hope you get something from this. Uh, uh, join our uh, deal, and uh, I've enjoyed uh, doing this, and I'd like for you to subscribe to our uh, program here on YouTube. So thank you again, and I'm going to close up and close this out now. So 